Hey guys, so I'm just gonna cut straight with you right here. I want you to sign up for free mode in the future. So today I'm kind of going for a sneaky strategy and just deliver massive value to you for free. And if you get this right, you could spin your own services around this, maybe even come up with your own app idea. And this has the potential to generate you some extra income. However, just like with every other business idea, it all comes down to execution. So let's get started. Hey, Jan here, codingwithzen.com, and today we will have a look at an automated testing framework that helps you to automatically test some of the most vital functions of a Shopify store. So that's like, can the add to cart button be clicked? Can the checkout be reached? And many of you were interested in this topic after my last video, where I told the story of how I accidentally made a client lose 15,000 in revenue after I didn't properly test some of the features that I implemented. And in general, I wanna say software or machines are a bit more reliable with these kinds of things. So let's dive right into my computer. Okay, so for this video, we're gonna need Node.js and you could find that with a quick search on Google, just download it from the official site and the installation is pretty straightforward. But as we haven't even talked about Node on this channel before, let me quickly explain what that even is. So Node is a JavaScript runtime environment that lets you run JavaScript on a server or in simpler terms, you could say, it lets you run JavaScript directly on a computer. And that is cool because traditionally you could only run JavaScript inside the browser, that is to say on the client side. And if you're not sure about the difference between client side and server side, you may want to check out my video on Shopify Liquid because then it will become crystal clear. But I guess the following example would also help to illustrate the concept. So let's suppose that you want to visit my website codingwiththen.com then essentially your browser is making a request to a server somewhere on the internet and that server would send you the exact page that you requested or to be more precise he would actually send you the html css and javascript that makes up the website and only after all of this raw data has been sent to you the actual processing and computing happens inside your browser so one could say the server is no longer involved and that's why we say all the computing happens on the client side. Now, if on the other hand, you were to visit my website and I needed to check whether you're a locked in customer, because maybe I want to decide whether I want to send you the default version or maybe the version for locked in customers, then I would need to determine this on the server side. And therefore I would need to have some logic in place, some backend logic. And with Node.js, I would be able to do exactly that with JavaScript because then JavaScript becomes my server-side backend language. Okay, now why is this awesome? First of all, JavaScript is widely used, well documented, has a couple other benefits to it, but one of the main benefits that I see is that it has a giant community. And whenever you have a community like that, you would eventually find a few experts in between, like maybe this friendly mathematician, the mad scientist, or the expert for cybersecurity. And eventually, if we're lucky, these people would just refactor all the code that they use in their projects and put them into tiny packages that we could then reuse in our own projects. And that's where the node package manager comes into play, also referred to as NPM. So that's another important concept that you would hear about all the times when working with node. And yeah, just like that, I think we have a very solid foundation to get started. And now it's time to get our hands dirty. All right, so here we are in my development store. And for the first few tests, we could check whether the product page loads, whether we get the add to cart button, whether it's clickable, and if the item gets added to the cart. And I think from there, we could just move on to the checkout. Okay, so on my desktop, I created this new folder called testing. And now I'm going to open that with Visual Studio Code, which is the code editor of my choice. And once this is loaded, we wanna bring up the integrated terminal. So you either wanna click on this gear icon and then bring up the command palette. You could also just click Control, Shift, and P. And the command I'm looking for is view toggle terminal. So this brings up the terminal. And then we just type npm init dash y. That generates a new node project. So it automatically generated this package JSON, which contains all the dependencies and whatnot. Uh, but for now it's pretty empty because we didn't include anything. So the next thing would be to install the testing framework. So I'm gonna type npm install Cypress. And I also wanna save this as a development dependency. So I would add dash dash 
save-dev, hit enter and wait for it to install. Okay, and now the installation is complete, took about two or three minutes. And as you can see, inside our package JSON, we now have this new dev dependency, which is the testing framework, Cypress version 7.1. And we also got this new folder, node modules, which contains all the code from the package and the sub package, because the package itself depends on further package, packages and so on and so forth. So these are actually quite a few, but we can just leave this untouched. And next I want to go into the package JSON and he would find an entry called scripts. And at the end of this line, I want to add a comma to add another script. And this one could be called, let's say, start. And the command we want to execute when this is called would be cypress open. And then we could save this file. And then inside the terminal, we just want to execute that. So I would type npm start. And then you would see that this brings up some kind of a web browser. And to help us get started, they generated some test files for us. Okay, we got it. And if we check back inside our project directory, we find a new folder that is called Cypress. So this has been automatically generated now. And it contains further subfolders. One is called integration. And inside that folder, we have another folder called examples. So these are the default examples you could have a look at. But what we are going to do is just create a new file inside that integration folder. And maybe we could write, or maybe we could call it, uh, let's do frontend.spec.js because I want to write, we want to write our own specifications. So, so this would be our new test file. And then you should be able to immediately find that inside our Cypress web browser view. And then if we open that file, it brings us to a new view. And here it just says that it didn't find any tests yet, which makes sense because we didn't define anything. So that will be the next thing to work on. Okay, so the way this typically works is that you start with a describe statement to group a bunch of different tests that follow the same purpose. So for this one, we could do something like describe and then a pair of parentheses. And let's call this one product page and then comma, function, another pair of parentheses, and then you wanna have a pair of curly brackets. And inside that function, you wanna have a little more detailed description, or let's say fine grain description for your tests. So what we could type is it, and then let's say loads the product page, or loads the page. And then we'll have another function, parentheses, curly brackets. So this follows the same syntax. And that's where we define the actual test. So just to show you what that looks on the front end, maybe we could quickly type something like, we expect five to equal five. And obviously that would be true. So let's save that file and bring up the Cypress browser again. So this is what our test currently looks like. We have the group description product page and it was supposed to load the page. So in this case, the test has passed because our assertion that five should be equal to five pretty much turned out true, which is obvious. And if on the other hand, we had typed something like we expect five to equal six, then we would obviously get an error. So maybe we should just move on to something more useful. And how this test writing usually works is that you first get the application or the site to let's say a certain state. And from there, you might want to take some action, but that's optional. And in the end, you expect the site to look in a certain way or to behave in a certain way. So that's the assertion. So for this first test, I want Cypress to visit the product page. So what I would type is site.visit and then we need to pass the URL. So I have it right here. Let's paste that. And after the product page loaded, I expect the URL to contain the keywords or the keyword products, because otherwise we might have gotten to a 404 page or the page didn't load correctly. So what we can type is sci.url and that should parentheses include the keyword products. And let's save that. 
And if we check back on the testing tool, we should see that the page gets loaded eventually. And after it loaded, the URL includes products. So this test has passed, perfect. And I think the next logical thing would be to test whether we have the add to cart button. Okay, so on the product page, now I'm looking for a unique identifier for this add to cart button. So what I wanna do is right click and inspect. And here we have that button. So I think the CSS classes would do well. So maybe we could just take product-form underscore underscore cart-submit. That seems pretty unique. And inside our testing script, I will now try to grab this element by the CSS class. So I will type Cypress get, and I will add a dot to indicate we are referencing by class name, then the class name itself. And then I will just chain the should method, pair of parentheses. And now I want to pass the element into an arrow function. So let's just type add to card. Here's the arrow function, pair of curly brackets. And now I expect this element, the add to card element, to have a length of one. Save it. And that's also one of the things I like about Cypress because of course, when writing this code, you would have to work closely with the documentation, but it's very human readable. Like we expect the add to cart to have a length of one. Like everyone would understand that. How awesome is that? And now back in the testing tool, we get a small error. Did you mean length? Uh, yes, I did. Sorry about that. Let's just refresh that. And now we see that both of our tests pass. So we can load the product page and we get one add to cart button. And if you highlight the test right here, you can even see how the add to cart button gets highlighted in the page. How cool is that? Okay, so now that we have a test in place that checks whether the product page loads, let's also see if we can click the add to cart button and if products get added to the cart. And therefore, I would now inspect this element here. And maybe I should just move this a little bit to the side because I want to find a unique identifier for these card elements. And I think the card pop-up item would actually work. So I would just copy that to my clipboard. And back in our testing file, I now want to add another test down below. So I would just put a comma at the end and then a new it statement. It adds products to the card. And then we will have a new function parentheses, curly brackets, and here goes our new test. So maybe I can just paste the identifier for a second. And then I wanna grab the add to cart button again. And this time I wanna click it. And maybe after we clicked it, we should wait a second. So wait 100 or 1000 milliseconds. That's pretty much one second. And then we should end up with at least one card item in the card. So maybe for simplicity, we can just copy all of the statement above, paste it down here. But instead of the add to card button, we now want to grab the card pop-up items. And maybe we should also rename this to card items or card item. So after we've clicked the add to card button, we wait one second and then we should at least have one card item in the card. And let's run our test file again. So now the page loads. This seems to work fine, perfect. And here it adds the product to the card. And now we could even use these snapshots to travel back in time. So here it loads the page, here it gets the add to card button. Here the add to card button is clicked. You would see this red dot on the add to card button. And then we wait one second and the pop-up appears and we have the cart or the item in cart. How awesome is that? And you also don't need to use this testing window because likewise, you can let all these tests run in the background. And instead of these snapshots, you could even generate a video file based on all your tests. So that's something Cypress offers out of the box. And that's pretty much where the opportunity lies because you could just put all your files onto a web server or connect them to a Git repository and use their deployment server. And then maybe every time there's a new push to the master branch, you could just let all these tests run or you could create an app based on that that maybe tests the whole store once a day or there would be this button, test my store now. 
and then you would just forward the video file or maybe a good looking report and that way you would make merchants feel more secure about their stores so you would definitely want to charge for these kinds of services. Okay, now lastly I also want to show you how you can write some checkout tests because that's like the most important part of the store and that's where I messed up back then. So therefore we would need to have an item in the cart and then proceed to the checkout. And in here we want to fill in a bit of dummy data and then just click on continue to shipping. Okay, so first of all I need a bit of extra data because when we write a separate set of tests the cookies will be cleared and we would need to add this product to the cart again. So we could just do that by using the variant ID and therefore I'm just showing the page source or viewing the page source and in here I want to search for variant. So that's the ID. Just copy that to the clipboard and maybe we can paste that right into our spec file. And inside the checkout I would need to find a way to uniquely identify all these text fields. So let's just inspect them. So this is the first one. And I think they all have a unique ID. So let's see, ID, checkout, email or phone. And now we'll just go ahead and grab all of these. So here we have everything we need to reference these elements. And now I'm starting with the new describe block. And this one would be checkout, function, parentheses, curly brackets. And let's just do it passes the checkout function these curly brackets and in between we want to have our actions and first of all I want to add the product to the card so I want to type sci visit and then the URL and now we'll append slash card slash add question mark ID and pass the variant ID so this would immediately add the product to the card then in the second step I want to visit the checkout page so let's just do sci dot visit and then slash checkout and now we need to fill in all the dummy data so I want to get all these elements sci get and let's just take the first one and then you can use the type command so for the email I would just put test at test for now and let's continue with all the others okay so now I have all the steps implemented First, the item is added to the card, then we go to the checkout page, and then we fill in all this dummy data into the according input fields. And finally, we click on the continue button, and let's see if this test works. So back in Cypress, let's run our script. And now it should actually run all the tests that we've defined. So it loads the product page, adds an item to the card, perfect. Now we're going to the checkout, fills in all the dummy data. <laughs> Look how awesome that looks. And then we continue to the shipping method and everything seems to work fine, perfect. All right, so that's it for today's video and I hope you found some inspiration. Now you can go ahead to create your own services based on that or integrate Cypress into your new app project. And other than that, I hope you like the new video setup and keep an eye on free mode where we take you from scratch to your own project as a Shopify developer. Early students have already landed their first project, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I guess then I'll just see you in the next. Bye.